Inspiring is probably not the first word that comes to mind when people think about this past year. Yeah, there are many other adjectives that can describe it. I'm sure some of you have choice words for 2020, but the artists our Ann Herbst talked to, they had to keep creating, and their work will tell the story of 2020 for years to come. So Ann brings us their creative works in tonight's Storytellers. This is called Lifting Your Voice. A way to help understand what's happened, what's happening, is to look through a different lens. Because art reflects life. That is what artists do. They react to the world around them and try to make sense of it. But stages are dark, galleries empty. The job has changed. Even my job behind an actual lens has changed. I just don't know about this microphone and if it also picked up people over there coughing or the birds. Yet creativity refuses to keep quiet. I've got to get up and create something. The recorders of culture. Right, got to fight for that joy. The creators of culture make the world better. All of it is this tool to connect us to each other. Creativity is determined to illuminate the events of this year. The election, again, the protests. So much has happened. Like, and there were so many huge things that happened. The disruption of everybody's normalcy. I mean, that's when art can really shine. It's a little backyard concert. Yeah. Just, uh, my neighbors are used to me by now. My name is Jen Cordy. I am an artist. Uh, my wife's name is Kelly, and she is an RN. This is the um, song I wrote during the pandemic. It's called Halo because I think she's an angel. Uh, there's just a, an enormous amount of grace and dignity that comes along with that profession and I constantly see people disrespect it. The, the song is about like they don't they don't even understand like we were living separately in the house at the time because it was in March and April we didn't know like how serious it was and she was working with COVID people and I'm high risk so well telling the stories of, of people's voices who aren't heard. This is the time in which we've come to realize how very vulnerable a lot of these people are. My name is Adri Norris and I'm a painter. I really got into murals this year uh, with regards to the unveiling of the varying levels of inequality that we experience in our country. It inspired me to focus not just on sort of women in general, um, but also to really dive deep into those who have been the most marginalized. So by elevating these stories, by telling them, by showing them, then that allows people to examine things more clearly and then gives us a place where we can actually enact change. With staggering, hateful ineptitude, nonstop fear and disinformation and finger pointing and uncertainty it was exhausting. I don't know, I always deal with things by writing about the country's ever worsening mental health. I, uh, I'm Adam Caton Holland, and I'm a, a writer and a comic. And for two and a half months, the country had been seized by fear. I mean, this year's been so nuts with, with the pandemic and, and all the, the racial inequality and the, the rising up to combat it. Um, that you just, I, you've got a million thoughts swirling around your head. And I was also turning 40, 40 in the middle of all that. Six so. years younger than George Floyd when he was killed. A global pandemic was raging with seemingly no end in sight. A wave of Americans was rising up to try to finish the fight for racial equality, while another racist wave was rising I mean, up to try uh, My to wife stop. and I have a joke where we're like, well, if I know anything, it's that this is all 2020's fault. December 31st at midnight, problem solved. Everything goes away and I just, I hate to be the pessimist, but I'm kind of like, I don't think 2020 is the problem. I think uh, people are the problem. I think we've put ourselves in these untenable, terrible situations. Everything was inspiring and terrifying. There was so much hatred and beauty in the world. Times are difficult and art brings such joy. Uh, I'm Amber Blaze, and I am the producing director of Rainbow Militia Circus. We are an immersive circus company. 
I feel like 2020 is going to bring about a lot of um, maybe darker stories, maybe more difficult stories. Got your head in the clouds, we use your fear and so our hope was in 2020 that we could help people escape a little bit. Be true. Uh, this one takes place in an imaginary world high in the clouds where the Greek gods have come together and are trying to create a brand new world that is better than the last one. I know the possibility. This is my yoga, this is my meditation. My name is Harrison Neely. I make furniture. <laughs> so 2020. My, my favorite subject, 20, 2020. The, the year all my hair falls out. <laughs> pretty hectic, pretty stressful. Folks getting locked up and killed and brutalized and my, my wife doesn't really want me out of the house after dark with everything that's been going on this summer. So it's a juggle between deciding whether tonight's a good night to possibly die or Tonight's a good night to get some work done. Got kids and the whole COVID thing, I got asthma, so not <clears throat> feeling, feeling comfortable or safe being involved, which it's hard. This is how I remember George Floyd. It's basically a play of words off of Pink Floyd, like being a brick in a wall and that's pretty much pretty much what everybody that's that's fallen to gun violence this year has been has been just another brick in the wall and everybody just keeps moving on the uprisings and the election and all of these things i hope that it makes us take a, a part in our own futures uh, my name is Frankie Tone, and I am a artist based here in Denver. I think a lot of my practice is about tackling serious issues, but with a playful attitude. The costuming that I've done before have all been very outlandish, very impractical, almost non-functional. Um, but then, you know, these, there's much more tailoring. They are usable, wearable, functioning masks. You know, I can still see the joyful thread of my work going through these pieces and through this year, That's even though it's been a pretty dark year. Sometimes I press my fingers toward the invitation of sky and say yes. You sitting underneath this weird microphone in the middle of a park in Denver. Not weird. Not, not the weirdest, no. No, I've done way weirder. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the long lines around the gun shop and the sold out bullets and the empty grocery store shop? My name is Susie Q. States. Smith and I'm an artist, activist and educator. I hope we sing like the people in Italy. My poems this I year are um, probably more full of hope and comfort than, than they normally would be. And my, maybe it's because I've written a million ragey poems already during the, the uprisings of the summer, and a lot of people were asking me to speak, and I didn't have to write a single new thing, because none of it was new. I've been referring to this as uh, the year that continues to demand our full attention. With that level of intensity, right, you're gonna have to feel your feelings. <laughs> you have to feel your feelings. I'll tell you this, I'll sing before I shoot. I'll sing before I shoot. Never been afraid of heaven anyhow. We might be a little beat up right now. And finding inspiration anywhere can feel bleak. But the soul of our city is a colorful, resilient one. Are you giving a face to something matters? Art hasn't been more urgent than it is. Every once in a while, we like to You still have that impetus to get up and create stuff. And it will continue to help us understand 2020 with emotion and strength and heart. Ah!